John Mendez here, uh, another of our little how-tos. This time we're doing bigger boats, how to tie them up. And you might think it's just the same as small, and it is, but everything, and I mean everything, gets bigger and heavier. Lines, fenders, all of it becomes much bigger and heavier, so you need to plan further ahead. This one's 60 foot, weighs best part of 35 tonnes, so there's a lot of momentum there, so you really cannot, under any circumstances, fend off in any shape or form. So it's all about getting the boat stationary, attach the boat to whatever you're tying it to. We've got a nice marina here, not a lot of breeze at the moment. I'll just show you my basic tie up and then we'll talk about what would you do leaving it for a while or if it's proper windy. So bow line first, absolutely crucial that the bow line is laid and ready. I'm just doing this on my own. Obviously, if you've got crew, it's a little bit easier. The key thing for me is I walk forward with the bow line. In this case, I'm using a tight bowline as my end and I'm going over the rail feed it in through the fair lead and onto the cleat. And then the other end, as I walk aft, I've laid it along the deck, making sure it's not getting caught on my fender baskets. And then the end of the line, I've just laid it on top of the rails, ready so that when the boat's ashore, I can grab that ready to tie it on at the bow. And you'll notice I'm not using a massively long line because they're heavy. You know, I don't want to be carrying around 40, 50 pounder line. Use a line that's just appropriate for the job. So that's what we got, a line which does the bow to the shore. Stern line, nice and simple, fed onto the cleat from outside. And I just leave myself a decent sized loop of line. And I can choose, do I want to work from the boat onto the pontoon? Or do I want to lasso from the boat? Either works. And a lot depends on your confidence in your crew and your skipper. So I'm both. So I'm reasonably happy that I can just step ashore. However, if I was unsure, I'd just do a gentle loop over the cleat, make it off on my boat. Your call. Okay, so as I've come down below, I've grabbed my loop, and I'm gonna chuck my loop over my cleat, make it off on my boat, now I can step ashore. Now I'm going to walk forward, and as I do, I'm looking for my bow line. There's my bow line, and now just walk as I pull. Nice big armfuls. I'm going to take that as far forward as possible. I'm always going to go to the far side of the cleat, and once I've got a half turn, I've got a little bit of tension there. Now I can just, with my body, just lean, take that extra bit of slack out and that will just help to bring the boat forward just a fraction my stern line was going a little forward so we'll just do another little one little ease as that comes in we're going to do that whole circle two eights and I'm keeping tension all the time so there's no slack there whoops <laughs> and a nice circle to finish good pull that's secure now I can walk back aft and make sure that I'm happy with that so as I walk aft, and note I'm not running anywhere, light conditions, but it's all a case of walking about. That little pull I did means the boat's moved slightly forward. My stern line that was a little bit forward is now aft. I can step back ashore, and I quite like this on the dock. So at this point, I can do that. And again, little pull just to take that slack in. Here she comes. My figures of eight again, keeping that line nice and tall. There we go. Now, I haven't got a particularly long line, so I'm going to use a separate line for my springs. So just let the boat settle, go grab my line. Now, if I was staying for a long while, I'd do very much one line, one job. But we're just going to do a quick set of springs, so we'll drop the loop on, take this forward, down onto the cleat on deck, same process I did before, I've got a little bit of tension there, just as I use my body weight, that's all I'm using, I'm not really pulling, I'm just leaning.
I'm just watching the stern of the boat. I'll see the stern come in slightly. That's as the line goes taut. Make that off. And then I'm going to take that up onto the boat itself. And same process, just a little lean. And that would be great for a short stay. No problem at all. So what we've just done, bow line, stern line, set of springs, fine for a short stay. And if you're moored like this is at the top of a river where the marina's well sheltered, that would do fine for a weekend, no great problem. But I wouldn't leave it like this for any length of time. And I certainly wouldn't leave it like this if I was going to be away for the boat for three or four weeks or even longer. So let's just talk big boats. We need one line for one job. So at the moment we've got a bow line, a stern line, and we've got a single line doing both our springs. Because of the size and weight of the lines, I'm going to change that and have one line, one job. And if I'm going to leave it for a length of time, the length of our stern line is far too short. Any weather or any boats going past and wash, that's snatching all the time. That's really bad practice. We want long lines, particularly for the springs, and they could be nice and tight, but we want the bow and stern line quite slack so that the boat has a degree of movement, but is firmly attached. So we'll show you what that all looks like, and then we'll just talk about what we'd add for real windy. So, what have I done? Well, I've end for ended the line. So I've taken the bowlines and I've put them onto the dock. Now, if I'm leaving the boat for a while, that means all my loose ends on the dock look quite neat. And I'm not completely filling a cleat with all my lines. So I've now got bowlines on the dock and you'll see I've got a bow line and a stern line that are really quite slack. What I'm now doing is I'm just tightening my springs, because I want my springs to be as tight as pos. We'll have another little go, get a bit more. Now, you might think, why on earth do I want that? Well, what my springs do, my springs stop the boat moving fore and aft. So this spring stops the boat moving aft, this spring stops the boat moving forward. And you'll see the boat sat foot off because we've got very light conditions. If there was an onshore breeze, she'd be held on. Offshore breeze, she'd be held slightly off. I could turn and tighten my bow and stern line slightly, but I want the boat to be able to move. Because as something goes past, if I was in a harbour with a bit more swell or a bit of wind, if the boat can't move, all these cleats get subjected to lots of snatch. So these work like long elastic bands. They just have a little degree of stretch in them. And the bow and the stern don't need to be too tight because we don't want the boat being pulled about. We want it able to move. So just the same as if you're going on a tidal mooring, you'd use long lines. Here we're losing really tight springs. They can cope with the movement. Slack bow and stern lines. Everything on the dock is nice and neat. All the loose ends of the rope are on the boat itself. And if I need to adjust anything, or if anybody needs to come and adjust anything, they've only got one bit of string to play with at a time. They're not all mixed in together. So it gives you a nice, satisfying result. Boat's really secure, boat's super safe. What about if I was gonna leave it somewhere really windy? Then I would double up my lines. So I'd have a second bow line, and I'd take it to the far side of the pontoon, so a separate cleat, and I'd take it from the other side of the boat. So I'm utilizing all the strong points on my boat. And then I might use a second stern line as well. But depending on where the boat's located, I would probably take it from the far side of the boat and take it further aft. I call that a cross line. And it just allows the boat to be held alongside that little bit more without being too tight again. If I was in the med and I was stern to, I'd have my standard stern lines and then I'd have crossed springs to stop the boat slewing around too much. And if you're leaving a boat in the med, it's really important to move it further away from the key wall so that any swell does not smash you into the wall behind you. So you tighten up on your bow lines, hold your boat in place.